All right. Hello, everybody. This is Stuart Jean coming back at you here from Musicians Institute, Hollywood, California, with another tutorial we're talking about for February 2020, the limbs, the roles of the limbs, the, gen the general roles that our limbs play on the kit. We're going to talk about our bass drum foot today. Could be your right foot, could be your left foot, could be both feet. Uh, before we dig into the feet, let's talk about seat height and some posture real quick. Uh, you know, everyone's different shapes and sizes, so it really depends. There's definitely personal preference involved and all that. Um, but as a general rule, you want your hips higher than your knees. You know, or they say if this is the ground, this is your legs, you should just be slightly angled like that. You know, so here's your hips, here's your knees, okay? Uh, here's the ground. Uh, super easy way to do it. Uh, you'll be the most balanced that way. If you sit too low, you're going to put too much pressure on your hips and your back, and you're going to overextend and just stress stress your body out. If you sit too high, uh, you know, it can create back problems, hunt weird leaning. Uh, you might have power problems uh, with the hands, and uh, you won't be able to, you know, use your uh, ankle the way you really need to on, on the bass drum. Uh, I think of heel down and heel up uh, as on, on the on the bass drum as like traditional and matched uh, on, on my left hand. Okay, I, I like to do both. Uh, it depends on what I'm doing. Let's talk about heel down. Heel down, yeah, it's not super strong. Uh, most of us aren't going to be playing super loud funk beats uh, or metal songs with our heel down. There are guys, uh, guys that study with Ed Sof, the North Texas disciple there. Uh, um, J.R. Robinson is, is one, uh, Herman Matthews. These guys play 100% heel down, and they're funk monsters. Uh, so it can be done. Um, so, uh, but why, play, why to play heel down? What are the advantages? You're relaxed, okay? You're absolutely relaxed. When I'm playing quiet, uh, you know, a simple rock beat, that's, you know, singer-songwriter. I'm just playing heel down. I'm, my body is relaxed. There's nothing weird going on uh, as far as my balance uh, on my seat. Um, and I can get some doubles and things like that, you know, if it's a. Uh, right? Yeah, I'm not asking too much there. Um, Bossa Nova, I like to play heel down. Yeah. I don't want to play heel up on something where I want to control all that tension and play quietly. I don't want to go and have my toes all curled up in my shoe and all that. So we always want to go for relaxation and uh, no tension uh, or temporary tension, which we'll get into. Um, the other thing with uh, heel down, um, you know, I, I got bet more into it when I was playing a lot of blues and playing four on the floor shuffles and not super loud. Um, you know, that, that just helped me develop just playing quarter notes. You know, my foot would travel on the board a little bit there, but I learned to discipline it and keep my, uh, keep my, um, keep my knee and my posture all good there. Uh, so yeah, heel down, that's the advantages. Uh, and it's comfortable, you get a nice snapping motion. Uh, I'm gonna show you a real quick exercise to help you develop your heel down and your just your general calf muscles. You may have seen this before, uh, but I'm just gonna demonstrate it real quick. Uh, check it out, you take your spring off your bass drum pedal. All right, you take your spring off, and now you got a dead bass drum. Um, what I'm going to do is pull the beater back onto my foot. Okay, there I go. Obviously, if I put my foot down and leave it down, that's all I'm going to get. Pull it back. You'll notice my heel is down. My toes are up. Of course, there's a little bit of tension. I'm not going to sit like this for very long. And then what I want to do is smack the pedal board with my, it's almost like I'm just pushing it like that. And I'm immediately returning back to my toes up. And yes, there's tension in the calf, 
but this is a great exercise to build. You don't want to overdo it. It's not about speed. It's about control. You just want to feel that. Helps your relationship with the pedal. And it'll definitely start to burn pretty quick. Uh, and you can always uh, do the same thing with your, with your other foot. Uh, you know, your hi-hat foot uh, or you double bass guys. You know, you can do this with both pedals. So uh, it's a great exercise. Uh, so check that out. All right, cool. Okay, so heel up. We're going for more power. Uh, but there is tension there, right? Um, just sitting at your kit, lift your heel up and leave the ball of your foot on your pedal. That's what's happening when you're playing heel up. We're not lifting our knee, and we don't want to be raising our knee too much. We still want our ankle driving that pedal like that. But go back to just lifting right there. That's a little bit of tension. You just want to practice that, literally just lifting, seeing what happens to your other foot. Do you push that down into the ground to balance yourself? You shouldn't. Okay, your balance really comes from sitting back on the seat. Let's talk about the seat again. You don't want to be way on the edge. You want to be on it nice and good. You want to, so I used to sit way too close to the edge or on the very edge, and yeah, it wasn't good. So this, I have more support. Okay, obviously, we're going to get more power when we play uh, the, with uh, heel up. Doubles are easier. I do the whole foot slide thing if you want to practice that what i recommend is lift that heel and like lift your foot almost all the way off the pedal board and just put your weight back down on it a little bit where your toes are the bottom of your shoe and your toes are on the pedal board and just slide back and forth like that and you'll feel it up in your upper thigh and it's this slide motion for your doubles a rebound. Of course, we're we have tension and we release. It's immediate. Right? And just practice grooves like, you know, Immigrant Song or anything with the, like two doubles before a backbeat and two doubles after is always good. Like, whoops. And you just want to make sure they're nice and even, you know, or just, just this. any kind of combination just throw those doubles in there and just loop it and just you know try to stay relaxed there and, and you'll get it um, so that's right now I'm playing with a beater off the head this drum has a big 10 inch hole in the front uh, it has a big blanket in it, so it, there's not a lot of variety in this bass drum. There's not a lot of character. It's just pretty dead. Uh, so you're not going to hear a huge difference when I'm talking heel down outside of volume. But heel down, you're going to get the most tone. You're going to move the most air, really. Um, it's going to be a warm, feather beddy sound. Heel up, same thing, but it's going to have more impact, obviously. More beater sound. And then we have beater in the head, like that. You can see. Now, obviously, in this drum, you're not hearing a big difference. But if there was more resonance in the drum, this would sound more like, oh, oh, oh. You're, cho you're literally choking the drum. Not always the best sound to go for. But I definitely do it if I'm playing like four on the floor disco. All right, let's go back to like uh, one and three on the kick and two and four on the snare. I'm not leaving the beater in while I'm hitting the snare. I am going to rest my legs. So here we go. It's really just for that second, you know. Um, I don't want to hit it and leave it there until the next time I have to play it, you know. So, But four on the floor, that's going to happen because it's just hitting so often. Um, but yeah, that's your main roles of your, of your bass drum leg. Uh, I, I suggest that you practice heel down, heel up. Practice both. Practice fast, quiet songs with your heel down. Uh, 
you know, just just find your there's always going to be a little sweet spot or a breaking point of ah, do I use heel up or heel heel down? You just want to smooth out that little that little uh, glitch right there in, in your playing. Uh, so, yeah, uh, that is the in my case, the right foot. Um, yeah. And next week we will talk about the hi-hat foot, to me the most important and most overlooked. So thanks for checking these out, everyone. I hope this helps. Uh, if it just confirms your own technique or maybe gives you some tips there uh, to improve your playing. So happy drumming, everyone. Take care. Thank you so much. <laughs>